Episode 24, Season 2 Cut Content, Subaru versus an Undead Nightmare. The final boss we didn't see. What? There was some extra stuff that just... Subaru fought an Undead Nightmare while rescuing Biko? What? Out of all the unfortunate things to happen in ReZero, okay. I bet you never expected Subaru to have yet another one-on-one -on -one against the mangled undead corpse of a former opponent. What? But that's exactly what happened as he was searching for Beatrice. Betragi showed up?! It was a whole battle with two previously defeated enemies that Who almost is it? cost Subaru his life. Who is it? A battle that ended with a scientific bang that would have made Senku proud. So, let's take a look at that amongst some other details as we go through the cut content for this it Sounds like there was a significant boss that was just skipped. What the hell? Very emotional episode. But let's first. Begin. But first. Episode 49. No ad. Choose Me. Covering chapters 6 and 7 from volume 15 of the light novel. After Amelia arrived at the icy spire. It shattered into particles of mana because the job intended for it had already been completed. Yep. The, snow the structure going. itself was no longer needed since the snowstorm had been created with a fair level of sufficiency. As we know, this was all because of the spell that Roswell had embedded into the crystal before his fight. Mm -hmm. It was a magic formula that rivaled in complexity and magical density to the one in the tomb. There was even the remnants of a defensive barrier that would have scorched any person who attempted to approach it. But the formula that constituted those defenses had already been unraveled, mainly due to Puck's intervention. So, all that was left was for Amelia to just see everything through. Now, the reason Ryuzu was so upset by Shima taking this duty upon herself was mostly due to a feeling of guilt from the way she treated her. Remember, Shima had been abandoned by the other Ryuzus for breaking the rules and entering- She got demoted! She was removed as an administrator and forced to spend the last 10 years with no one else other than Garfu. So, Ryuzu didn't think it was fair for Shima to be the one to bear this responsibility. But Shima did but it! Just like how Garfield came to understand the role that he had to play, so too did Shima come to understand her. I guess Shima's just gone when now, man. When everything was said and done, neither Amelia nor anyone else really understood what had happened. All Amelia knew was that she'd just bore witness to a very pivotal moment. It was after this that she went to go find Ram and Roswell. As I mentioned last video, the only reason Ram was still alive here was due to Roswell's subconscious compulsion to help her. The constant flow of mana he was providing her with allowed her to maintain whatever weak hold on life she currently had left. It's a course of action that I explained a bit more in my most recent video. So, if you want to see Roswell's true power or the reason behind why he does this, then feel free to check that out next. Sixfold magic. Also, he just loves Ram, man. She's supposed to be the f final one, right? The person to bury Roswell at the end. But anyway. With that being everything that happened at Sanctuary, we can now go back to the events of the mansion. So, no one's gonna talk about the Echidna voice, huh? No one's gonna talk about how Shima said one line with Echidna's voice, and that's not supposed to matter at all? Is that supposed to be hinting that her past experiment, while it was a failure, because it's a failure, we were able to hear her voice for a bit? Yeah, I don't know. During the flashback of how Beatrice inherited the Forbidden Archives, there was a quick mention of how it was likely that Roswell's gate had been destroyed in his battle with Hector. Echidna believed he probably wouldn't ever be able to showcase his prowess with magic again. But even without his innate magical talent, Echidna still believed that he could be helpful to Beatrice. After the first Roswell had passed away just prior to the age of 30, the connection Beatrice shared with him began to fade with every new Roswell that took his place. That's right, then Roswell B made her showed up, and then later on it's basically no longer the Roswell she knew back in these good days. Though they all shared the same name and revered the same mother, there was only one Roswell whom Beatrice considered to be special. A Mathers. Everyone else that came after was nothing more than an empty fake. Uninspired copies that she couldn't C even bother to associate D with. E F so, as the centuries went on with Beatrice doing as she was told, there was one event in particular that brought some life back to her. Puck. A reunion with a great spirit whose origins were identical to hers. Origins are identical, meaning Echidna created Puck, but we've never seen Puck interact with Biko during those past 400 year memory. But what set these two spirits apart was that Puck wasn't bound to the will of his creator. No. Instead, he had started a new life. I also don't know if it's confirmed that Echidna created Puck just yet, just simply because Echidna, uh, you know, Ananya said the origins are the same as Biko. That pretty much implies that he was created by Echidna, though, does it not? One that was completely different from the life he had the last time she saw him. This was a life that go back wasn't bound to the will of his creator. No, instead he had started a new life. 
one that was completely different from the life he had the last time she saw him. Because he defeated Melakoira, then assumed his position amongst the four greats, right? This was a life that Beatrice herself could only dream of. Not because he was doing what he wanted with the one he loved, but rather because he was actually fulfilling his duty. Mm. Puck was doing the very thing that Beatrice couldn't. That's right, they're both spirits. Contracts are very important. Biku can't even fulfill her contract because it's just a prank, bro. He was following through with his end of a sacred pact. Thus the reason for Beatrice's envy. That's right, the envy and jealousy were not directed really to Amelia, but more for Puck about how Puck is living all those spirit dreams that Biko can't. When the day finally came for Subaru to make his unexpected appearance, we learned that he'd been able to find Beatrice's passage so easily due to his affinity for dark magic. His innate magical trait had made him highly compatible with her. Hmm. So what he mistook for his own intuition was actually him sensing a connection to Beatrice. That's why he'd been able to find the archive time and time again. So, can we- if a contract is gonna be made from Biko to Subaru, is Subaru now a spirit art user? How does that work? Right? Because Amelia made a contract with Puck. Spirit art. Subaru already has a high affinity to spirit. Now his gate is broken. And... I don't know, like, the gate being broken probably doesn't really matter as much because- well, what, what, how, What's the mechanics of a spirit? Maybe we'll have to watch that how magic works in ReZero, but from what I remember in Season 1, the difference between a magic user and a spirit art user is that a magic user passes their own mana internally through their gate, right? While a spirit art, their source of mana is not from within, but rather externally. Now, I'm not sure if you need to have your own gate for that kind of shit, but it's looking like Subaru, Spirit Art user, Biko, it's gonna be fucking crazy. Now, despite Subaru being such an unappealing person to her, the more she had come to know him, the more fond of him she became. It wasn't that he was a particularly special individual, but he was the first one to come to the archive for her. Yeah, and he always found I mean, her. All the others who had come before him either sought the power she possessed or the knowledge she was guarding. But that guy is so important again. This dude here. Not him. This guy. This guy looks familiar from somewhere. I can't really tell. But this guy. This guy definitely important. Mr. Mustachio that we saw. But Subaru was the first one who actually came to see the girl. Not the spirit. Okay. This much became... Because Subaru has no clue. He just treated her as a... Hey, number one NPC. Drill Lolly. Has no clue what she is. So that disrespectful... Like... I don't know. Introduction was like, wow, he's different. It became evident when Subaru had come to ask her about curses. So it was during this time that things actually weren't too bad for her. Beatrice was even considering being a little bit nicer to him. Just a little bit. But that all changed when Subaru went to the capital and didn't return. At least not when he was supposed to. The day that he did, though. The news that came with him was what allowed her to send him away in accordance with Roswell's plan. It was at this point that Beatrice had grown accustomed to being left behind. Yeah, that timeline, I never really thought about how Biko felt bad about Subaru not returning. And at that point, right, Biko just like sent dead a million Subaru out into just like the road. It's like, you know, I forgot about that shit. Never really thought about how she was feeling. I thought she was just chilling. So adding yet another person to that list wasn't going to make much of a difference. On the night that Beatrice thought everything was finally going to end, the boy she'd sent away had returned one more time to poke at the feelings she'd been trying to hide from. I mean, here she was so close to breaking free from her centuries of loneliness. Yet, here was this boy trying to revitalize a hope she'd thrown away such a very long time ago. What is the answer to breaking the centuries of loneliness? Just ending yourself? It was a moment that caused Beatrice to think that perhaps there was a different future. Perhaps she could actually get revenge on the cruel fate she'd been exposed to. Revenge! Do, do we want revenge? <laughs> Betty, Betty's gonna settle the score with her mom, who is currently quote-unquote dead and sealed away? Are we gonna defeat Volcanica and remove the seal and bring a kid out just so Biko can fuck her up? The only thing she needed to do was simply reach out and grab it. That was all it took to break the 400-year-old obsession that led her here. Right as those hopes were about to be met, though, Subaru himself crushed them with his very blunt answer to her question, leading to the first time he'd been flung from the archives. It was after this that he was ejected four more times before succeeding to stay. 
four more times in this source material. That's crazy. Down the fit. And while the ensuing conversation was pretty much taken word for word, where the novel starts to go into more detail is with the distortion of the archive itself. Okay. When the whole world around Subaru started to become hazy, he quickly fell to his knees as he found that he wasn't able to stand anymore. Something unrelated to anemia or fatigue was causing his body to grow weaker. Monica something that out? was quite clearly related to the domain that he was standing in. Eventually, Subaru came to believe that it was because of Beatrice. Because the state of the archive was directly related to her mental- Wait a minute! Okay, I, okay, I'm like, where, where, I, I, I'm like, where's the undead boss? Where, where, it's, it's coming up, the undead boss is coming up. State. It was likely falling apart because her weakened mind couldn't maintain it. Got it. Whatever it was, though, the only place that remained unaffected was the area Beatrice was sitting in. Everything else was being torn apart by cracks in space that Subaru had only ever seen once before. Now, here's where things start to get a little bit different. Cut content! After Subaru had fallen into the void and awoken outside the mansion, the ensuing search for Beatrice had taken quite the dark turn. The first thing to note was the presence of a dense black miasma. Oh? There was this shadow-like cloak that seemed to envelop Subaru's body and shield Miasma. fire. A shroud of darkness that Subaru himself wasn't even aware of. We don't know exactly what it was or how it got there, but it's likely Subaru wouldn't have made it as far as he did without it. That said, the search itself didn't go as- It sounds like Satala helped him out there, right? It helped him. The miasma somehow helped him get here. Smoothly as we saw in the anime. Well, it was going fine up until Subaru suddenly heard a strange dragging sound coming from the distance. Oh no, not this sound. Considering that all the demon beasts had already fled. Subaru couldn't even imagine what it was that was making the sound. Uh-oh. But he didn't have to wonder for long since what emerged from the flames was a figure dressed in black. Elsa? A woman faded to confront Subaru one last time. Is it Elsa? Is it really Elsa in her last stand? As soon as he saw the black blade that she was holding, Subaru immediately knew that this was Elsa. What? Or at least what was left of her. She got crushed by the hippo! It was obvious that the person that was Elsa no longer inhabited this body. The way it dragged itself across the- Oh! So it's like that corpse. Elsa's dead, but her corpse is like moving. The burning ground showed there was neither a soul nor any sign of life. The hell? There How? There was only this hollow darkness that seemed to emanate from the body's empty gaze. Given that its lower half had been completely crushed, Ugh. Subaru believed that this was the incarnation of Elsa's obsession. Her limitless- That's possible? Incarnation of Elsa's obsession? It's a dead body, it's a court, it's, it's soulless, but due to the strong obsession, it somehow has this last stand? It's bloodlust given physical form from beyond the grave. While you could chalk this up to an abnormal level of vitality, it was probably more accurate to simply call it a curse. There was no peace in the afterlife for- Now, is it the actual curse that she was given by the, like the skilled magician back at Gusteko, but alright. For a being who lived to cause so much pain. Anyway, Subaru didn't have time to deal with the corpse in front of him. Ooh. Luckily, since it was crawling at a relatively How beat slow it? pace, all he had to do to avoid it was go the opposite direction. <laughs> the instant walk he away. turned his back, though, the corpse lunged itself forward in a series of attacks that Subaru barely managed to avoid. Ah! The only reason he was spared from the initial slash of it was because the body's mangled legs had prevented it from getting close enough. So Subaru kicked away the hand carrying the blade, then ran towards the floor above. The idea was that Elsa wouldn't be able to follow given her lack of functional legs. But to Subaru's surprise, a couple flights of stairs only worked to slow her down a bit. So Subaru had no choice but to go all the way up to the third floor. As he was passing the study that- He's just making this poor fucking corpse drag- Remember, this corpse has no legs, it's all crushed, so it's just like crawling up the stairs three- Third floor man, come on! Otto and Petra had escaped from. A familiar set of claws quickly slashed out towards him from behind a wall of fire. Guilty low? The creature it had come from was covered with numerous burns. It's but still alive? But didn't stop Subaru from recognizing it as the Guilty Rao. It was definitely much weaker since it was struggling to even breathe. Okay, the source material Otto and, you know, Spetra did not assassinate the Guilty Low by, like, burning it. It's still kind of alive. But it was certainly strong enough to still kill him. Since it was probably still following the orders of its master. That meant that Subaru needed to get out of there as fast as possible. I mean, getting stuck between a shadow lion and an undead Elsa was definitely not a position he wanted to be in. So, as this demon beast went in for an attack, Subaru evaded it in a roll-like dodge that placed him behind it. 
making it so that the guilty route was now between himself and the undead that was chasing him. Nice movement. Because there was now this obstacle directly in the way of Elsa's target. She unexpectedly began to dismember it as if it were an enemy. First, she cut off one of its legs. Then, after the guilty row tried to retaliate with its tail, she simply dodged then cut that off next. Elsa did. Though there wasn't any logical reason for her to do so. It was clear that nothing was going to stop Elsa from getting to the target that she was hunting. Superu just got lucky that the guilty row happened to make for a nice temporary roadblock. Seeing as how this was his golden opportunity, Subaru went to open the last remaining door in the mansion. But what he found was a doorway to nothing much like how we saw in the anime. As he could hear the sound of Elsa's one-sided fight coming to its end, Subaru knew he- Elsa really fucking up this guilty lama. I know it's burning, but Elsa also doesn't really have legs and it's just a fucking half a torso just crawling on the ground. And it's just funny to imagine again, just like this crawling Elsa, no legs, just like fighting on the floor with just her hands right now. He had to think quick if he was going to make it out of this. So that's when he remembered the final door remaining in the basement. That's right. Hidden Since passage. Since this was actually an underground escape tunnel, Subaru couldn't help but think that Beatrice may have planned it this way. You see, whether he did or didn't end up opening all the doors, every path would have eventually led him to this escape tunnel. Mm -hmm. So perhaps Beatrice had been trying to save him this entire time. Maybe. What she probably didn't realize, though, was that the escape tunnel had already turned into this ticking time bomb, something that I'll explain a little bit later. But what this meant was that Subaru was now surrounded on both sides. To his front was an explosion just waiting to happen, and behind him was an undead slowly approaching its target. There was absolutely nowhere left for Subaru to run now. Even while being in this perilous situation though, Subaru wasn't the least bit anxious to know the outcome. Because he knew that Beatrice was the one in charge of the result here, That's he right. was able to be at ease as he opened the door. Now. When the undead Elsa rolled down the stairs and sensed its target right at the door ahead of her. <laughs> rolled down the stairs this time again. I'm just imagining her just half her body just coming down the stairs by rolling down. She immediately charged so forward funny. without any regard for the flames surrounding her. In one hand was the blood-soaked blade she was known for. And the other carried the heart of the demon beast she'd just slayed. The hell? All of which was becoming more and more scorched as she made her way deeper into the flames. Are you flexing right now? It literally has, like, it's just crawling with one heart, one knife, it's just like, this, this, this zombie Elsa is crazy. The closer the undead got to the door at the end of the passage, the more it was able to make out a stagnant black miasma coming from it. This must have been where the undead believed its target was, because the Subaru. instant it got close enough to attack, it sliced the door to tiny bits and pieces. As soon as the remains of it fell to the ground, both white and black smoke collided with each other in a matter of seconds. The oxygen from the underground passage was now quickly entering the room that was just recently so deprived of it. Okay. With the entire passageway now caught in this reaction of incomplete combustion. The end result was the scientific phenomenon known as a backdraft. Now we didn't get the flower dust explosion happening last episode, but hey, this one, it works? A relentless explosion that instantly incinerated the undead corpse that had caused it. Cool. Leaving nothing behind but a smoldering pile of ash. Now, the first thing Beatrice told Subaru- Now for sure Elsa is dead. She's already been dead, now her zombie body also done. ...was how he wasted the opportunity she'd given him. It turns out that she was in fact trying to lead him to the escape tunnel. But now that there wasn't a single door left to connect the passage to, both were stranded within the archive, bringing us to the emotional conversation from the anime. Take my hand, Biko! There really isn't too much to say when it comes to this. The anime did a fantastic job adapting it just as they normally do with every emotional climax. I mean, most of it was pretty much taken That word landing for word. man. To sum things up though, rather than try to understand the pain the past 400 years had caused her, Subaru was instead offering Beatrice hope. Live for the future. A hope that could start to heal whatever wounds had been carved into her from her centuries of loneliness. This was the last thing Beatrice believed before dropping the tome and reaching out to grab the new future that awaited her. Anyway. That's, That's pretty much it for this episode. All so right. I hope you enjoyed this little horror. I just, this crazy that like they cut this shit out. It would have been just, uh, it's not an important thing. Like, is it a deal breaker? Like, it's not important, right? Like, it, it, it doesn't like give us. Well, well, the curse like manifesting into the corpse zombie would have been cool to know, I guess. But like. Not ha having that shit cut out for the sake of just like more content. I don't know. It, it just of all the things to cut out, 
maybe this one makes sense. Having one last final struggle would have been more a hype, but I totally understand why they would cut it out. It doesn't seem seemingly too important to the story. And if we saw Elsa again, though, I would have popped off for sure. I, I would have popped the fuck off saying, oh my god, just when you thought she was done, it's never done just yet. But that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it of Elsa and Guilty Lao just coming back with one last vengeance. Subaru um, defeating them through the scientific phenomenon known as a backdraft and combustion happening. And then that's all. And then we have one more episode left. We're almost done with the cut content too. Please go give Mr. Andy News a like on the channel. Check out his channel if you haven't. And I will see you on the last video. We got one more. We got one more. And then there's also like an extra video about what's it called? Uh, something about ReZero Season 3. Like everything you need to know before starting Season 3 or something. But we'll check that one out too.